this episode of Pedal Box, I'm tearing down the rest of the engine so that I can get the head off and start cleaning it up before we put the rest of the build back together. So yes, the time has come, we're going to take the head off, have a look inside, check out the gasket, see if anything is looking bad on there, because this still does have an erroneous water leak and we haven't ever worked out where it's coming from. We did solve it once, which it was the head gasket, but there's now no drips, and it all just seems to be consumed within the engine, which is extremely annoying. And nothing we've been able to determine, not that we've actually done a lot of diagnosis on this for a while, has led to the answer of where this is coming from because there's no drips on the ground, there uh, is, there's nothing running down the side of the block. It just, it's maddening, basically, trying to work out where this leak is coming from. So hopefully this is going to be a good answer or a good opportunity to check over things again and tear it down more so than we did last time. So I've taken the cam cover off again and I want to lock out these cams. Now you can get a plate which fits in at the end, but I don't have one and what I do have is a lot of metal. So I've cut this out and made a couple of little detents uh, here because these lines in the end of the camshaft, these slots, actually sit slightly lower than the top of the cam cover. So this just drops in at the end like that and then I've got a couple of bolts that will just secure it into there. And that means that the camshafts won't move once I release the timing chains that go down onto the crank. Now in order to get the head off, I have to slacken these timing chains, obviously, and to do that I have to get into the panel on this end of the engine, which, as you'll notice, is currently blocked by an engine stand. That's not very convenient. So that's going to be an interesting one. I'm going to take the thermostat housing off probably as well, depending on what I actually need to do. But one way or another, I'm going to have to have this still strapped up. I'm probably going to have to move whatever metal just moved in the rafters. Um, and I'll just try and hold it on here as best I can and move things out the way and then put it all back together again once the cam cover is off and I can get into the timing chains. Because checking out how the guides are is also another very good point that was pointed out by Crispy on one of the last videos, or on the last video we did on this engine. So thanks very much. I hadn't actually thought to do that and I probably should have. So in addition to that, I took all of the remaining pipework off, all of the electrics that I could, the coil pack, everything from this end of the engine and sort of sprawling down. And I've also labelled them up, so hopefully I might be able to put this back together on my own. Whether or not I can is a different matter altogether. I've never actually reassembled an engine, well, I've never even stripped an engine this far down on my own, let alone tried to put it back together again. So we'll see how that goes. Well, not for the first time, I'm wrong. And I'm sure a number of you are probably screaming at the screen going, no, you don't have to do that, it comes off the top. Because actually, this is the panel that I need to take off, and there are a load of um, Allen bolts. These look like the wrong size for that, that's a certain fact. Uh, these look like five mils, and some are a little bit easier than others. Just make sure that all of these are loose. Oh no, that's a sensor, don't need to remove that. And with all of these off, there's just two more bolts under here that will take the rest off. This one's a little bit more tricky with the housing in the way. If I can avoid taking that off, I will. And there's that one. So all of these bolts should now spin out and then I just have to do the ones on the bottom. Now I did give this one a quick test a second ago and it does seem to be okay. However, this one is going to be a bit more tricky because the engine stand is actually in the way. So I'm going to have to pull one bolt, but not the whole thing, which is way, way better for right now. So now with the cover panel off, we can take a look inside and obviously with the, uh, the crank moved to the right position, there is enough gap and I can actually see down the back of this guide, I, well I'm not going to be able to turn that that way am I, I have to move it at the other end but I have seen there is some wear down the back edge of this, in fact when I get my finger in the very top end there, 
I can actually see there are a couple of grooves from the edge of the chain. So it's almost certainly worthwhile replacing these guides while I'm in there. Now, the chain itself looks okay. I actually couldn't tell you how to spot just by visual inspection whether or not this chain is done for or not. So I'm going to have to look into that and work out how I inspect this for newness and whether or not I actually need to put a new chain on as well as guides. I'm not even sure whether or not that is just a prerequisite and you should do them both at the same time, but we'll see. So the guides themselves almost certainly need to be swapped. I'll take these off later, but now it's time to start taking the head bolts out. So that's the head off from the block, and there's one thing that I forgot to do before I took it off, although it doesn't really matter, and that's to pull the spark plugs. Now, I've already gone round and loosened them all, and I've made up this little rig here to hold them all in place. And they should even keep them in roughly the right alignment as well. Oh boy, that's... Okay, so apparently some water got into the top of that plug, but not the bottom. Well. And that rather corroborates one of the other things we found taking it apart. Uh, that side's got some light corrosion on. Looks clean to the top. And there we go. So, now have six plugs and this cylinder Number, actually, I'm not entirely sure what numbers these are. Uh, three, maybe? There. Either way, this one at the back is really, really dirty. Like, the, these plugs look pretty badly fouled. They're black all over the contacts. All the rest of them look, oh no, this one's a little bit white inside, so I'm going to have to look up what the difference is between black and white. These three, so that's the, this cylinder, this cylinder are white and black coked up. And then this one is a tiny bit black, but for the most part, good considering it actually had a huge amount of rust that had dropped into the top of it. So that could have been a lot worse. Now on the block end, it's not looking too bad. The gasket doesn't appear to have any obvious leaks in it that I can see, which is good news. I'm still not sure whether I'll be reusing this or putting a different one in. Obviously wanting to go with boost at some point means that I want to put a spacer plate in, so I'll have to take the head off. So if this one's looking good enough, I may try and reuse this one, but we'll see what happens. Um, pistons wise, this is the one that is badly coked up on the head. So it's actually, it's rotated round, but this is the diagonal channel on the other side, and this is the same piston. And again, it's very carbonated black, but actually most of them tend to be everywhere. If I just put this torch on, they are all generally quite sooty. Uh, oh no, maybe not, that's gray. That's gray, I can't see that one. That's a bit gray, that's definitely blacker. Okay, fair enough. Well, that scans with uh, the coke being on the valve train as well. So the next time you see this block, or indeed probably what you're gonna see me do next, is clean down all of the outside of this and get as much of the grime off as possible because even just down this side, if I scrape through there, you can see it ain't looking good. It is really, really filthy. And now I've just covered my hand in goo, which was probably careless. So that's going to be the next job on this, is going to be to clean down the outside of the block so that when I'm handling it and doing everything else, I'm not going to get absolutely filthy. Underneath the head gasket looks pretty good. It doesn't look like it's been leaking through there. It just needs a really good clean out to get rid of all of that rust from the water channels. I'm not sure if you can reuse a multi-layer gasket. Let me know in the comments if you can. I may try and get away with this if I'm able to, or I'll just spring for a new one if I absolutely can't reuse it. 
After that, it's just time to clean the block, and there's always more water to pour out from the channels. So if you've enjoyed the episode, make sure you've subscribed already. If you'd like to support us, go to shop.pedalbox.show to buy some merch. And if you'd like to support the channel more directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow, where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.